Hi, welcome back. Recently I was browsing around on the community forum for Microsoft Power Automate and I was looking for inspiration for a new video. And what I found is this post here for from Charlene74 where they are asking um, how they can check if a SharePoint folder exists. So the question is, hello, I'm trying to set up a flow to check if a folder exists in SharePoint with a condition. If the folder exists, create a shared link. If the folder does not exist, create it. Let's see how we can do that. So as you can see here, I have created a demo library in my project management SharePoint site, and I've created three folders, folder one, two, and three. So what we're going to see is, or what we want to achieve is that I want to check if the folder that I'm inputting as a user, uh, let's say I write folder two, if that folder exists. And if it exists, then I want that to create a shared link for this folder so that I can then send it uh, via email or whatever. If it doesn't exist, I want it to be created. But enough with the theory, let's see how we can do this in practice. As you can see, the flow has already been created and let's go through it and see how it works and how you can put it together. So I decided to go with a manually trigger flow because I want the user to enter the folder name. So if I want to trigger this workflow, I will have to enter the folder name to check if the folder exists or not. This is something that can be customized in a different way. Maybe you want it to um, be in an automated cloud flow coming from a SharePoint list where the users will enter the folder names that they want to be created or shared. I mean, there are countless scenarios for this, but just to keep it simple, I went with a manual trigger flow uh, trigger and um, I'm asking here for the user to enter the folder name. So this will prompt uh, when the user triggers the flow. Next, I'm initializing a variable. Why? Because um, later in the flow, so the next action is uh, to list the folders. So I'm going to check what folders are in this library. And for that, I want to have a variable where I can save those names in an array. That's why this initialize variable uh, is called var folder names and it's from type array. The value is empty since it will be um, the values will be appended in the in a, in a later action. The next action is list folder. So what I'm doing here is I'm going into my project management SharePoint site and I'm going into my demo library, which is this library over here. And the response from this action is um, a list of my folders. And if we take a look at one of the uh, previous runs that I have tested, we can see here that the outputs of this list folder action is just a list of uh, my folders. Now you can see here in the JSON. So now I have the list of the folders and what I'm going to do next is I am creating a pass JSON action where I'm using the content from the body of this list folder action and I copied all this, um, yeah, all this schema here from the list folder output and used it to generate this, yeah, this schema here for the pass JSON. So that way we have the IDs, the name, display name, and everything we need from that list folder action. Next, I'm using an apply to each. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm appending to that array variable that we created the, the display names of the folders. Uh, so as you can see here, we have the display name of folder two, folder one, and so on. So I want these names to be in that array variable. And this is, of course, going to create an apply to each loop huh, because there are multiple values. Next, I'm using a compose action just to have this variable um, in there so that I can view it a little bit easier. Because if we take a look at the run, um, if I see here the apply to each where I append the values in the variable, I can see here always one value at a time. I need to scroll to the next one. So instead of that, I use a compose action. So this way I can see the, the finished array after the runs, uh, after the apply to each runs. So I have a better overview of what values are in my array. Okay, now we have the compose. The next uh, action will be a condition because now I want to check if, um, if the outputs of this compose, so this is the outputs, this array, if the outputs of this compose action contains the folder name that the user entered. 
because here we are going to decide if we are going to create a shared link or if we're going to create the folder. So if that name that the user entered is not in the folder, um, sorry, it's not in the um, outputs of the compose action, uh, it's pretty easy. We go the no path and we create a new folder. This is a standard action where we select the, the SharePoint site and the library, and then we um, enter as a folder path the folder name. Uh, it, just the folder name entered by the user will be sufficient to create the folder in this, um, in this library. For the um, yes path, it is of course a little bit more complicated because then we want to do a little bit more. We want to extract that ID, of course, of that folder that already exists, and then create the um, create that link, that shared link for 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 later usage. So what I'm doing here, um, I'm doing a filter array because I have this array here. Um, you know, so we have this array here of um, of the um, of the folders that we already have. And I want to filter this because I want to keep only the folder that already exists. Now, for example, if I enter folder two, I want in that filter array to keep only this information so that I can use it for the creation of the link. So that's why I'm filtering the body um, where the display name is equal to that folder name entered by the user. So as you can see here, we have this display name. The body is from the list folder uh, action. No? The body is from this list folder action. And from that, we can get the display name. If I click in there, you can see it. Hopefully, there it is, display name from the list folder action that we did before. And then we check if it's equal to the folder name. That's it. So next, what I'm doing here is I'm doing a pass JSON again because this path JSON here uh, contains multiple values, contains all the, the folders listed. And I'm doing here a path JSON based on the uh, response of this filter array. Um, why I'm doing that? Because I need the path later on. No? But bear with me for a second. Why I'm not using the path from filter array directly? Why do I have to do a path JSON? because that's not possible. Uh, if I check here, um, the path uh, from PathJSON2 is there, but from my filter array, there is no, um, no dynamic value coming back. It's just an output which I can use uh, in my PathJSON2. Why do I need the path? The, well, I need the path because later, um, to create that sharing link, I need the item ID. The item ID is the folder ID and the folder ID coming from um, from the values before, like from past JSON one or past JSON two and list folders is not going to work for this uh, create shared link for a file or folder. Why? Because this ID looks like this. Now we have this um, encoding here, demo library, and I think I think this is for backslash and then folder two and so on. And that's not the ID we need. This is like um, like a path ID or something like that. What we need is a simple ID, it's an integer, like five, six, three, and so on and so forth. And that ID we can grab from this action, get folder metadata using path. And the path we need is coming from this path JSON two. Why is coming from this one and not from the first one? As I said, the first one has all the values from this folder and this parse JSON has only one value, which we get after the filter array. That's why, um, yeah, it's it looks redundant, but it's not. Okay, so now um, because uh, we use dynamic values from a parse JSON a JSON action, we get this applied to each. So by putting the path here from the um, from this parse JSON and the body, um, we can get the metadata. And after getting that metadata, we can see here, not this one. So um, after getting the metadata, we see the ID that we need. No? So for, for this uh, folder two is the ID number six. And you can see here we have the item ID and the ID no? from the list 
folders action, we don't get the item ID, we only get the ID. And for the create sharing link for a file or folder, we need this ID here, not this one. And uh, yeah, the next uh, step is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We create this sharing link. It's also a standard um, action where you select your SharePoint site, your, your library, and then you place that ID, that item ID. Um, and then what you can choose is if you want um, the viewer or the, the receiver of this link to view and edit or only to view. You know, this is the permissions level and then the scope. You know, who is allowed to see this uh, or to use this link? Anyone with a link, including anonymous or people in organization only. You now this is, um, oh yeah, you can also put the link expiration here. You know, it requires a date in this format and after that time after that date that this link will expire so let's test it out i'm going to click test and test this manually now and this will request uh, me to enter a name for that folder if it would ever load and as we see here we have folder one two three Let's enter uh, a folder that we don't have. Let's say folder four and say run flow. Done. My flow is running. And this is the fastest uh, of the runs, I think, because it's so that we don't have that um, folder already. And we are going to create it now. So it just went and created that folder and as you can see here it if we refresh the page we will see you have a new folder called folder number four what happens if we already have the folder so let's do a manual test again and let's write here folder four the one we just created click run flow and this um, I think it's going to take a little bit longer so the expression is not true, it already ran and it went the yes path. No? So it's so that we already have that and it created this link and this is the sharing link that we can use then later for, I don't know, whatever, sending via email or so. Why? Because the folder is already there. And uh, yeah, it, if the folder is there, we share a link. If the folder is not there, we create it. It looks like it works. Yeah, so I think this is all of it. I hope I covered everything. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. You can, again, you can use a different trigger. And also from here, you can continue, maybe send this link um, via an email and so somewhere or post it in a channel or whatever. You can imagine that yourself and what you want to use it for. I hope I covered everything. I hope it was clear and understandable. Um, for me, it works. If it doesn't work for you, uh, let me know in the comments how I can help. And um, yeah, I hope, I hope it helps. If you liked it, please uh, subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up to this video. And thank you very much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Bye.